the Acura. Grand Prix of Long Beach is away, and Kirkwood gets a great start. Green, green, green. Kirkwood, no stranger to leading the junior formulas, but this is his first time in the big leagues as Erickson goes to the outside. Pato Award trying to make it three wide. It's going to be Kyle Kirkwood leading, but side by side, Grosjean and Joseph Newgard heading into the fountain. This is one lane only, Townsend. Indeed it is. They file in, well, too wide there for Will Power, and already is that Elio Castro Neves in the wall? It is. Elio Castro Neves, the four-time Indianapolis 500 winner. It's normally single groove through here. Castro Neves comfortably inside the number 45 of Christian Lundgaard. Did he get tapped? No, I think or did he, he just, just had, lose it. I think he took a lot of curb into turn one. Yeah, cold tires, Townsend, you know, the cars at the back of the grid. Long Beach is so unique in the way that last corner really spreads out the back of the grid on the start. They're arriving with a lot more speed, didn't quite have the heat in the tires, took a lot of curve, got aggressive on the throttle. Let's get ready. Green, green. You can race, so there you go. Scott Dixon thought about it. Yeah, he's right with his teammate there in that bright green car. That's Alex Pillow right behind him in that uh, yellow and black car. The Gainbridge Honda is Colton Herter. Back to racing here on the streets of Long Beach, and Kyle Kirkwood has gone. Takes off on a beautiful restart. I, I'm looking at Colton Herta on the outside of Scott Dixon here. You don't want him in your mirrors. He is so good at passing here at Long Beach. Won the race from 14th on the grid. One of only a handful of drivers who's won from further back than fifth. And as we ride on board the Gainbridge Honda, he is all over the back of that blue and orange machine of Scott Dixon. Alex Palou has been looking pretty racy. That green car on the back of Pato Award had a pretty aggressive looking start. He goes to the inside, into six. Nice move. And that's the difference between the primaries and the alternates. The number 10, Alex Palou, as we look at Scott Dixon, maybe try to cross over. He's on those softer alternate tires with the green sidewalls. That's going to give him more grip, especially on these restarts, as now Scott Dixon's looking to make that move on Award, who's on the primaries. But watch for Award a little later on. We'll follow that story for you as this race grows on. This is Callum Eilat in the 77 for Hunkos Hollinger Racing. And you saw during that break, he dove for the pit, and this is the reason why. Had a puncture to the right front. Oh! Clipped the wall really hard. Things starting to get tight here. That's the white and black car at Joseph Newgarden on that harder primary tire with a great run down shoreline on Grosjean. Looks outside, ducks inside. And he's going to get him under brakes into turn one, outside. Joseph Newgarden. Clear. That means he's made up five positions from the drop of the green flag in the Hitachi Chevrolet. And the defending race winner wants to defend that victory. He's on the move. And Marty, we've been talking about this all weekend. Penske, strong over a long run. Good at taking care of the tires, but they don't have that one lap speed on new tires. They're starting to show that muscle, that durability at this point in the stint. Yeah, Joseph Newgarden called that shot Friday afternoon, didn't he, with that first practice session. But Newgarden was the real winner from the start of the race. Started eighth, gained four spots on the first lap. That does not happen very often. And what you're seeing right now, that call to start the race on the primaries, really coming to fruition. Kevin, he's been the fastest car on the track for the last five laps. And the young man that won this race two years ago, Californian Colton Herta, is hoping that a tire advantage comes into play. He has the extra set of the softer alternates, but he told me this morning, I'm not sure that we're gonna be able to use those. We wanna get rid of the alternates and they go primaries the rest of the way, unless somehow we get a shorter stint, and then we would have that for the last stint of the race. Dave. This is for Townsend, who was telling a story about Brian Herta being Kyle Kirkwood's uh, signal caller now. Here's the recent radio. Let me know if Pato starts slicing through. No, not yet, not yet, you're doing fine. We're okay, pace is good. First car on black is New Garden. But he isn't passing anybody. He did that all on the start. Oh, okay, cool. So the driver wanted to know about those two drivers, O'Ward and Newgarden. When I talked to Brian Hurd this morning about the new relationship, he was so excited. He said, extra special to see Kyle Kirkwood on the pole. He said, for my son Colton, I've seen all of his first. First pole, first start, first win. Oh, and now you got a car in the barrier there. Oh. But Brian would love to see the first win today. Scott Dixon, we saw him tag the wall. We showed you that replay, and now he is in to the tire barrier at turn eight. It is a regular trap. No matter what the form of racing here on the streets of Long Beach, but what happened to Dixon? Look at those skid marks there. Early lockup. Both 
left sides and right sides. You can see the tracks. Breaking issue, Hinch. I wonder what happened. Oh, Pato, is that? That is Pato. Pato Award inside. Like I said, this kind of move, you never would have seen this last year or in the last bunch of years here at Long Beach, that new pavement just giving drivers the confidence of throwing it down the inside. And let's see it from Pato's on board. And I'm sure Dixon was just surprised. I, That's a late it, move. It came late, but the contact was square. Shoulder to shoulder, perfect alignment. And I would assume IndyCar calls that a racing incident. Oh, I, that, that one's on the edge for sure, because you got to think from Scott Dixon's standpoint, he's turned in, committed to the corner, not thinking anyone was there. Then after he's committed his rolling speed, his turn in point, the car shows up. One thing IndyCar looks at in that type of contact is, what is the outcome? Do both cars go off, come back on? Does one keep going and one's race ruined? So, and a lot of times it's the pendulum of responsibility. The needle of responsibility. <laughs> That's how they use Either it. Either one of them. That's how yeah. they go. The but pendulum. This, this is the driver in the series nobody wants to upset. There is so much respect and reverence for this man here, the six-time champion. Absolutely. I mean, he is widely regarded throughout the paddock as the greatest of the generation, without a doubt. There is not a weakness in Scott Dixon's game. He is, you know, an elder statesman, so to speak, in the series now, but a lot of the drivers look up to him, his opinion. He's been through a lot in this series. And uh, but here, here's, the, here's the thing also, Hinch, that I think you got to take into consideration is the tires, right? Pato on the harder compound, Dixon on the softer compound. Pato's watching Newgarden go forward. Dixon knows this is the point in the stint that you should see the crossover. How much does that weigh into the needle of responsibility in that situation? So I, I just think that in terms of race control looking at this, to me it's a racing instant. I, I do agree Pato came from far back, but for the situation of the stint with the tire compounds, it was on. And the other the other part to remember is, again, there's not a lot of experience with being passed there because in right. the past, it's not been a passing opportunity. Marty, what do you know? Well, whether race control calls it or not, just remember, Scott Dixon was not very happy with Pato Award from the start of the race and the way he started the race. So I'm sure this is not going to dissuade him at all for his anger for the five. Yeah, this will be a uh, to be followed uh, topic for sure. By the way, that was for fourth place because you see uh, rather sixth place you see Alex Pillow in the top five up ahead of Pato O'Ward so second full course caution of this race um, in the still in the early open, part. We will pit, pit, pit. pits are open and you're hearing the call there from the various pit boxes we will pit 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 so let's see what goes down here it's been a fairly um, calm race thus far except for those two caution periods a lot of, lot of lead follow. This is going to jumble things up. Let's see who gets out of the pits the best. Kevin Lee standing by. Take it away, Kev. Marcus Erickson has already won on a street course this year. Three of his four wins on the streets. No changes this time. He has an easy in coming in off the weave around. Scott McLaughlin and come back out. A lot of traps, Dave. Brian Hurta called the timing of this caution pretty much ideal. So is his entry onto pit road. Kyle Kirkwood away with brand new, with brand new primaries within the window, Dave, to make it to the end on just one more stop. You see Joseph Newgard who storms through the field on the primary tires. He goes to the alternate tires and then gains four spots here on pit road. He'll leave second right behind Kirkwood. My goodness, did you see that Hitachi Chevy just fishtailing? Let's relive this wild moment off pit lane oh, with beautiful, Joseph Newgarden. Beautiful piece of driving diff from Newgarden, slipping the clutch, working the tire spin, and all the while just avoiding Kyle Kirkwood. Great stuff on pit lane. And we've talked a lot about pit lane in the last little while. Contact leads to penalties, so great job from both these drivers to enjoy touch, avoid touching each other and any of the members in pit lane. It's so tight down there. So that gives you Newgarden a fair shot, a square shot at Kyle Kirkwood. Now, Augustine Canapino stayed out. That's the black and green car you see there, Carly. He is off sequence with everybody else. So Kirkwood is ostensibly the race leader. You see Elio Castro Neves there in the mix. The pink car you see third is Kirkwood, then Newgarden. We're back to racing in the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Kind of a weird situation because Castro Neves is sort of trapped. He didn't get the wave around, and now you've got Callum Eilat coming out of the pits in front of his teammate. This is going to stack up all the true race leaders starting with
with Kirkwood going back. Watch the frustration develop here quickly. Oh boy, did you see Marcus Erickson get sideways on acceleration there in that white and red Husky Chocolate Honda for Chip Ganassi Racing. Sideways goes Canapino. And that allows Elio Castro Neves now to try to get around Canapino. He's going to do it on the outside of turn six, side by side, as we see one of the McLarens, Pato Award, going inside of Grosjean. Oh, it's on. Slow. Look at this. Down to turn eight. Here comes Award oh. again. Pato Award spins. Ericsson hits him. Kirkwood gets away with it. And Award thought, oh, I got Scott Dixon. Now I can get Kyle Kirkwood, but it was too much, too late. And Award goes backwards. That was desperate from the championship leader. Imagine what Kyle Kirkwood's dealing with right now. He was leading comfortably. Now he's got lap cars and chaos as New Garden's in the lead. My goodness, what a wild restart. Cars out of mix, out of the order. Scott McLaughlin has vaulted his way up there. Here goes Newgarden. He wants to get through this traffic. This is Elio Castro Neves wheel to wheel in oh, turn bye. one. The, the defending race winner is clear of that. There's just one more, and he's going to take off with a clear road ahead. Now, remember, Joseph was able to switch onto those softer alternate tires. They were always going to be better on the restart as we saw Castro Neves get big sideways there. So it's no surprise Newgarden was able to get ahead of the 27 of Kyle Kirkwood. But eventually, as we saw in that stint, those alternates are going to start falling off and come back towards the primary runners. Uh, Kyle Kirkwood just needs to stay calm right now, but further back, Nobody's calm as Augustine Canapino continues to fall through the field. And James, the sun is fully out now and the track temperature is rising quickly. Now 106 degrees. So to your point, Newgarden has to make these tires last as the heat rises. All right, let's take you back, show you what happened on that lap from the restart. Check this out. You're on board with Kyle Kirkwood. There's oh. Canapino oh. gets sideways. Kirkwood hits him. There goes Newgarden flashing by on the run downhill to turn eight. This is Pato Award. Watch this move and spin. Oh, boy. Just so impatient. We talked about it at the top of the show. That's not the kind of move you need to make at that part of the race. He's got those alternate tires on. Got in way too deep trying to pass Marcus Erickson, got all the way up to the car in front and Kyle Kirkwood. So within two corners, your former leader Kirkwood was hit twice. Yeah, and the other thing was Canapino clipped the wall too at the apex of turn six. So that's really what stacked everybody up as Canapino was trying to figure out if his race car was even drivable. That was on board with Grosjean. Another on board look here and with the car stop there, the number five contact with Erickson, that's damage probably to the eight. We saw the 10 of Alex Pelot get caught up on the outside of this wreck. He lost a lot of time as well. You see Scott McLaughlin going by. There's a replay, David Malukas. Oh boy, all locked up and over that orange line and then runs deep into turn one. Back to the racing pressure on Scott McLaughlin. Here comes Colton Herter. Look at this yellow and black Gainbridge Honda. Sweeps around the outside, which gives him the inside run. Doesn't need it, he's already there. Herter past McLaughlin. And look in the background. Here comes Marcus Erickson as well. We're definitely at that crossover point, Townsend, with those alternate tires. Absolutely. And you want to watch the young local kid hunt. Colton Herter will gobble up the gap in front of him and catch his teammate Grosjean very quickly as Kirkwood and Grosjean trapped a little bit behind Newgarden right now. And here comes Erickson looking down into turn six. No protest from Scott McLaughlin. Realizes you're probably going to lose more time by fighting that for the next few corners than you are just to let him go, take the position, try and get him back through the pit sequence. All right, let's talk more about the PNC Bank Honda number nine, Marty. Yeah, unfortunate news, Scott Dixon, no oil pressure. He is off the track, back in the paddock. We'll get a word with him in a moment. Hey, Townsend, let's play strategist. Closing in on about eight, 10 laps until these stops happen. So how far do you push it? Do you assume there'll be some caution later in the race and bring your driver a little bit earlier if you're Tim Sendrick and Joseph Newgarden? Or do you play it safe and leave them out until that 54 lap range that we showed just a moment ago? What do you think? Uh, you pit early, you're gonna be slow in that final stint if it stays green to save the fuel. But if you pit a little later, you're in that danger zone where if a yellow comes out, you fall victim to bad luck on timing. And that first driver to pit goes straight to the front of the queue. So. It's just a pure gamble. I think you study the statistics of this race. I think it's probably more likely to finish under green than yellow based on what I've seen so far. But at the same time, from a strategic standpoint, if you're the 27 of Kyle Kirkwood or the 28, this guy right here of Roman Grosjean, you're gonna wanna stretch it as far as you can. You wanna force the driver ahead on the alternates to pit 
do the overcut, run hot laps while they're trying to come up to speed, duck into pit lane and try to cycle ahead of them as we see Renus VK on the inside of the 45 of Christian Lungard. One thing we know about Newgarden is this battle continues. Whoa. Wow, that got close. Lungard on the outside, and I don't know Hold if he on. can make it work there. Hold on, good work. Renus VK, very kind to leave a ton of space for Lungard at the apex. That could have been ugly. And Benjamin Peterson, bottom of your screen, the Sexton Property Chevrolet for AJ Foyt Racing. If it's not running, it'll bring a yellow for that 55 of Peterson. He stranded two Turn one in the runoff area. This is what Joseph Newgarden really kind of wants. It's still a little bit early, it's obviously. It's too early. But it, every, it's too early for everyone. So you can get off of those alternate tires. You see him giving the international sign of, I need to be started. They could try to leave it local, yellow, and get him restarted and not go full course caution. Yeah, but that's a dangerous spot to put the AMR safety team. Let's see what happened to Benjamin Peterson. Those right sides get on that fresh painted line. He overcooks it. Back end goes out, and it looks like a full 360, but at that point, the car is stalled. So local yellow, it stays green. Look who's in the pit. The two. That's in early. This is exactly what Kyle Kirkwood wants to see. He's now got to push, 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 be all over that push to pass, try and get as many quick laps as he can, Marty, as we see the number two come to pit lane. And this was a debate that we were having. Would you gamble on maybe caution coming late in the race? Those numbers, Townsend, that you wondered about, it will show cautions usually come here late in the Long Beach race. So primary is going on for Joseph Newgarden, 33 to go. Final stop of the day, one of no changes on the car. And Marty, that puts Kirkwood, Grosjean, on Erickson into the danger zone as Pato Award taking the same strategy. And I think Kirkwood and Andretti, they're going to have to cover here, Marty, as Award comes to the box. Yeah, and I think these Chevy teams just needed to come a little bit earlier. Also, those alternate tires falling off so much. They told Pato one lap ago, go as hard as you want. That's kind of the signal, hey, we're going to come on the next lap. The primary is going on. He has made, by the way, no progress since that contact earlier, pitted from 13th. Well, last year it was Joseph Newgarden who won by staying out longer. This time, would it be Kyle Kirkwood who stays out? by uh, win, winning by staying out longer. Uh, that, yeah, that's a fuel alarm that you see going off on Kyle Kirkwood's dash there, the red and white lights. You hear the call from the team, and Grosjean's in the pits, Dave. His teammate, Grosjean, gives up a second place. He'll get fresh, unused Firestone primary tires on there. No changes elsewise to the 28 car. Out goes that DHL Honda, Alexander Rossi there in the NTT data machine for Arrow McLaren. He dives in. It's been a really solid run by Alexander, the two-time Long Beach winner. Marty? Yeah, it's been a nice run for the two-time Long Beach winners. You mentioned Diff in seventh when he came to pit road. So the car much better on this run. So going a little bit longer in the Chevy for Rossi. Traffic on pit road, as you can see. Let's see where Rossi blends out. Let's see what happens with Grosjean blending out. Where's Joseph Newgarden? Grosjean gets out ahead. Okay. So he makes yeah. the overcut work, but Grosjean's on cold tires. Newgarden's got a lap of temperature in those Firestones. And Kyle Kirkwood hasn't come into the pits yet, but I'm seeing he's got stuck behind some he traffic. That's going to really hurt him he on is. that in lap. So important to get the best lap time that he can. He's diving into the pits now. It's all in the hands of the pit crew and this out lap. Doug Burns. You said it, guys. What is the in-lap like? How bad will that be? Fresh primaries going on the 27 car. Kyle is in his marks well. Team gets him going, and he nails it. And Kevin. Marcus Erickson comes in from second. He's going to primaries. He's back out. He's going to easily beat Colton Herta, who was the only one that had tire choice, but he doesn't feel like he can make the alternates last the rest of the way. Primary Firestones and Shell Fuel and Herta back out. And coming out of the hairpin is Romain Grosjean and Joseph Newgarden. Look on your screen to the bottom there. Here it is. It's a drag race. Kirkwood is off that pit lane speed limiter. He's going down to the bottom there. Here comes his teammate. Kirkwood's going to beat them both out, and he's on cold tires can he hang tough can he do what new garden did last year it's all to play for with 31 to go lead team penske driver is joseph Newgarden behind the andretti autosport duo marcus erickson is the best for chip ganassi racing and here he is here on the inside of joseph Newgarden. Man. that's for a spot on the podium it look out andretti here comes the ganassi boy erickson clear of new garden and now erickson can really press the pace <laughs> this is just a great drive for Marcus Erickson. Got caught up in that incident earlier, fell a little bit back.
but he is just methodically getting passes done on the racetrack. It's a big gap up to these two here, the leaders. Kyle Kirkwood, Roman Grosjean, you see it there. It's about six seconds on the racetrack. He's got 26 laps to do it. This is what I want to pay attention to now. How quickly can this number eight chase down the leading Andretti duo? Joseph Newgarden's led 27 laps to this point, hence sitting in fourth right now. What's the plan for the final 26 of this race? Listen on the radio. It is what it is now. You got to save a ton of fuel for us. We got like fuel 90 to the end. Just sit there and save. We'll sort it later. We just save what we can here. And that is a big number for him to save. In fact, a moment ago, the reason the eight of Marcus Erickson went past Joseph Newgarden, Tim Sendrick said, you're going to have to let the eight go by and the 26 of Colton Herta if we even have a shot to make it to the end. How big a deal is it for Kyle Kirkwood to have conducted himself the way that he has? In all of the junior formula, the road to Indy, he has been stellar. He was the most hyped rookie coming in last year because of that track record. This guy doesn't know anything but winning. He's even won in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. But, but his rookie year last year was not good. It was frustrating. There was lots of big moments, but there were also lots of big disappointments. However, today he's driving like a series veteran. Let's have a quick listen to some radio, then the boys will comment. Okay, good job. Let's stay on fuel 85 or better. Fuel 85 or better. This will help us later if we can give you some more. Yeah, I got be sorry about the last two. Look at that. Great conversation and what a huge gain for Kyle Kirkwood to have Brian Herta, one of the best strategists and one of the calmest voices on the radio. In anxious moments, good times, bad times, Brian Herta is a steady set of hands and has guided so many young drivers to victory in IndyCar. So, Pretty magic combination coming here together. But it's also the calm that you're hearing in Kyle Kirkwood is very impressive. We've talked about his junior formula car career. We know he's no stranger to winning, but winning at this level is different. And he has done everything he's needed to do up to this point. And every time we've heard him on the radio, you know, when they were explaining the New Garden situation earlier, he said, oh yeah, cool, no problem. You know, he's been very calm, very level-headed, didn't get flustered when he did lose the lead at that, at that phase and he's just he's driving like a pro and thinking acknowledging that hey i could have done a better job for you there i'm aware i'll put it to good use going forward so gonna be fun to watch these two teammates go for their first win the rule in indycar is you have to be a lap down to the entire field before the command blue is shown but ah. pato award doing the right thing great great move and that'll come back to pato award somewhere somewhere in their respective careers. Kirkwood will repay that favor, I'm sure. So Kyle Kirkwood with a little bit of a sigh of relief there. Four laps in front of him, Diff, just three and a half at Long Beach. It's all for the taking. Those two were teammates in Indy Lights, obviously still friends, a lot of respect yep. between them. So uh, again, a very great move, a uh, gentlemanly driver move right there from Pato Award to let the top three go and let this race carry on with four to go. While we're enjoying this action up front, I want to give a shout out to some other drivers a little further back. Marcus Armstrong, lead rookie and lead Kiwi of the three New Zealanders in this race. The youngster is in the top 10. Santino Ferrucci for AJ lap, Floyd lap, Racing. 30 seconds. They just told Grosjean that. You can use 30 seconds oh if you're boy. pushed to pass these last three laps. That was the go signal. He's been saving so much fuel up to this point. So he can use 30 seconds of his 153 seconds. He can use it in 20 second squirts if you need to. The other driver who's put in a great performance other than Santino Ferrucci a little further back, Graham Rahal, making up 11 positions from where he started. I don't see that thumb of Grosjean moving just yet, Hinchcliffe. You tell me I've got an extra 50 horsepower with the win in front of me, I'm gonna be all over that button. Now I'm, I'm waiting to use it all in one lap. Close up that gap and try to initiate that pass. Here he goes, he used a little bit right there just to get a good jump off of turn nine. He'll probably use a little bit again to get a jump off the hairpin, but he needs to be closer than a second to have a legitimate shot. And remember, Kyle still has a lot more of fuel. Yeah. He's got enough push. He's got more than 30 seconds of push to pass, so he could probably defend second for second. Now Grosjean's on the button. He's ready to go. Two laps to go at the line here. Brian Herter on the left bottom box. Olivier Boisson on the right bottom box. The engineer of Romain Grosjean on the radio. They're both taking a look. 
both getting a little nervous. There's less than four miles of racing to go. Marcus Ericsson would dearly love to steal his second spot away from Romain Grosjean, the two former F1 drivers battling it out here on the closing stages of the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. And for either Kirkwood or Grosjean, if they were to get the victory, they would join a list of drivers like Michael Andretti, our old mate PT, Paul Tracy, Juan Pablo Montoya, Mike Conway and Takuma Sato as drivers to win their first ever IndyCar race on these famed streets of Long Beach. What must be going through Kirkwood's head? I gotta tell you, this guy, I've been his teammate, the Vassar Sullivan Lexus team in sports car racing. I know how mentally strong he is. Nothing has really rattled him so far in his IndyCar career, but this has to be the most pressure he's faced so far. And he's going to see the white flag with a clear track ahead. What a great feeling for Kyle two, Kirkwood. To finisher, One to go, get to the finish, bud. You got less than two miles, Kyle Kirkwood, before you're an IndyCar race winner. And to get, you want, hard as you want. to get your first one here, he's been told he can go as hard as he wants. This is essentially one of the majors of open wheel racing. Oh, yeah. The you Grand Prix of Long good, Beach. Good this will mean so much to this oh. young driver. Alexander Rossi, it looks like, down in the tires. That's terrible for Rossi, who was having a really good race. That's you, down in turn nine, I believe. That's very unfortunate. He was running comfortably in the top 10. He was in the top 10, and that was going to bode well for his points haul as well in the NTT data, Aaron McLaren Chevy. What a shame. Last time up the back straight for Kyle Kirkwood. One of the most celebrated road to Indy drivers because of his phenomenal winning record. He had to answer a lot of uncomfortable questions last year in his rookie year. It didn't pan out the way that he had hoped, but the famous Andretti name with a young American behind the wheel, Kyle Kirkwood is your latest IndyCar race winner. He wins the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. Let's go, Holland! Yeah! Oh my gosh, thank you so much, guys. Amazing job, amazing job. There is Michael Andretti celebrating. Brian Herter on the radio. Brian has a habit of being that calm voice to talented young drivers and getting them to victory lane. He's done it again with the AutoNation Honda of Kyle Kirkwood. Victory Lane, if you get to this spot, this is truly special. Victory Lane, Marty Snyder at the Acura Grand Prix of Long Beach. What a place to get win number one. One of the crown jewels on the IndyCar schedule. The pride of Jupiter, Florida, Kyle Kirkwood is an IndyCar winner. Wow. You've dreamed of this moment your entire life. Were you thinking about that? Is this the stuff dreams are made of? This is amazing, man. Oh my gosh. What a day. The calmest day I've had in two years, and, uh, and it was a win. You know, uh, we got a little unlucky with some traffic there and fell back, but we kept our heads, heads straight, uh, made awesome pit stops. I was really the only one that made a mistake in the pit stop, to be honest, and uh, came out with a win at Long Beach. You told, you told me yesterday when you won the poll, I knew this moment would come. Did you know this moment would come because a win is way different? I was so happy with just the poll yesterday, but this is, I'm over the moon right now. Man, this is incredible. For the whole team, for everyone, for Auto Nation, Honda, we had a stellar day as a team with Andretti Autosport with Roman in second there. He was keeping me on my toes. And uh, thank you so much, Michael. Let's go. And then Colton with the P4. <laughs> Incredible day, oh my gosh. What, what went through your mind when you crossed the checkered flag? So many moments go to getting here, Kyle. What went through your mind? I just had a moment of relaxation, to be honest. I was just like, finally, we've, we've it's not really finally, because we're only three races in, to be honest, but uh, it felt like it for me. I, I felt like I needed this win, and we got it today. And uh, a moment of relief, no doubt. And um, I can't thank the team enough, man. Brian did a fantastic job with strategy. My engineer, Jeremy, we didn't touch anything from qualifying. The car has been the same the entire time. So it's, uh, it's hats off to the Andretti crew. Hey, speaking of Brian Herter, real quick, he told you on the cool down lap, take a moment, look at everything, soak it in. Did you do that? Nearly put me in tears, yeah. Uh, it was a really cool moment, no doubt. All right, Kyle Kirkwood, a winner on the IndyCar Series. Dave, what a place to get it, too, Long Beach. Watch the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix, Sunday, April 30th at 3 p.m. on NBC.